Merry Christmas, children. It is the most wonderful time of the year. And I am dressed like someone very famous, Charles Dickens. He wrote many, many books about Christmas. He's in libraries everywhere you go. And Charles Dickens, who was a very famous man, said it's always good to be a child and never better than at Christmas when its mighty founder was himself a child. You see, children, Dickens understood that Christmas was and is and always will be the birthday of Jesus. So Merry Christmas, children. And now it is time for me to tell you a special Christmas story. Children, I think you're really going to like this one. Now, children, I will tell you a very special story. Children, the stories from long ago. Children, this story is true. Every bit of it is true. It is the story of a queen. Now, we all know what a queen looks like. She wears a crown, something like this. But children, this is not a European queen. This is an African queen. Her name was Candace. And perhaps she would have worn a hat, something like this. Queen Candace had one person in her life that she trusted with everything. This man she trusted with all of her wealth. She trusted him with all of her treasure. She trusted him with all of her jewels. She trusted him with her silver. She trusted him with her gold. There was nothing that she did not trust this man with. Now, this man traveled a lot for the queen. And one day, he was out riding along on his chariot. And as he was riding, he was reading a book. Okay, it wasn't a book like you and I think of as a book. Because back then, books looked like this. They were called scrolls. And he had found this in his travels. And he just couldn't stop reading it. He didn't actually understand it. He thought it was making a promise. He hoped it was true. He wasn't actually sure because he wasn't actually sure what he was reading. But there was something about the words. They made him feel different inside. They made him feel like there was hope. But he didn't understand it. Now, far away, there is another man. Someone very, very special. Now, this man's name is Philip. And Philip, he has his eyes on God. He loves God. And something pretty incredible is about to happen to Philip. Because all of a sudden, in the middle of Philip's normal, everyday life, something happened that probably hasn't happened to your eye. Suddenly, an angel showed up. An angel, children. I am not making this up. This is true. And this angel spoke to Philip. And this angel told Philip to do something. The angel said, go out into the desert. This was God speaking to Philip. And Philip could have said, oh, you know, it's so hot out there. There's nothing to drink for miles around. I've really had plans for this afternoon. That's not what Philip did, children. Philip, as fast as he could, he ran to where he knew God wanted him to be. And he waited. He looked to the left. He looked to the right. He looked behind him. He didn't see a soul. But then he saw, coming down the road, he saw this man, the Queen's man, riding in his chariot. And as he was riding along, he saw he was reading a book, a scroll. And as he watched the man reading, suddenly Philip goes running up beside him like this. And he says, hey, my name's Philip. And the guy probably looked at him and thought, weird man, get away from me. But Philip didn't give up because he knew he was supposed to be there. And so he keeps running along. He says, hey, I see you reading a scroll. I can tell you what it means. Whoa! All of a sudden, this man stopped. He couldn't wait. I mean, he'd been trying to figure this thing out. 
and he couldn't understand it. And it was strange to him. So he hands it to Philip. Philip looks at him and goes, yeah, I know these words. It's a promise, and I can tell you what it means. And then he began to tell the man the most incredible story. And I'm going to back it up for you just a little bit, children, so that you'll be able to know the whole story. But it's like this. You see, a long time ago, people, oh, they were angry. They were mean. They were always getting mad at each other. There was a lot of yelling and a lot of screaming. Hmm. It's a lot like today. And God saw this problem. And God could see that these guys, they needed a rescue. He could see that they couldn't help themselves. So he did something beautiful. He sent the most wonderful person in the world to earth. Someone who wasn't like other people. Someone who was all kindness, all love, all peace, who never said or did or thought a bad thing in his entire life. He sent his son, children, to come to earth. Wow, that's incredible. Now, as his son, Jesus, traveled around, Jesus told all kinds of stories to people. He told them how they could have hope, how they could know love, how their lives could be different, how they didn't have to live like they were living. He made people know that the wrong things could be made right, that in this world there may not be things that are so good, but he could promise them hope, hope in the darkness. And he did beautiful things. He made sick people well. He fed hungry people. But then one day, one terrible day, everyone got mad at him and they nailed him to a cross. But don't worry, children. This is not the end of the story. And this is the best part of the story because you see, he rose from the dead. Nobody's ever done that. Jesus rose from the dead. Can you believe it? That is amazing. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he beat death. And when he beat death, he was able to give you and I the hope that we wanted so much. He could fix all the things that couldn't be fixed by you and I. And as Philip began to tell the Ethiopian this story, he said, Sir, you can know him. You can know him as your friend. And the Ethiopian listened with his ears. He listened to it with his heart. And it was the most wonderful thing in the world. And he turned to thank him. And he was gone. He couldn't believe it. I mean, one minute he was there, then he wasn't there. He was there, he was gone. He disappeared. Not a trick, children. A truth. Philip disappear. Wow! What a story! And now, children, I'll tell you the rest of this story. The rest of the story is actually the story of Christmas, because this is all part of the same story. Now, you may remember the story of those shepherds out in a field. That's true, children. There really were shepherds in a field, and they were taking care of sheep. Now, I don't know how much you know about sheep, sheep are kind of stinky and they're not the best company and so all of a sudden angels show up to these men men that nobody probably wanted to spend a lot of time with because they smelled like stinky sheep and the angel said glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men and then they told the shepherd the angels told the shepherds look you can follow the star to Bethlehem it's over a manger, and that's where Jesus is going to be. Now, of course, the shepherds went, but children, they weren't the only people who went. Because as you can imagine, the birth of a king, that's a pretty important event. Now, far, far away, there were other men. They were called wise men. And they would have worn some pretty interesting hats. 
And these wise men also knew that the king was being born because Jesus is the one true king. And they came to see him and they brought him gifts of gold. They brought him gifts of frankincense. They brought him gifts of myrrh. Children, the Christmas story is a true story. It is the real reason that we celebrate Christmas, what I have just told you about today. So children, here's what I want you to remember. I want you to remember that Christmas is real. Christmas is true. And children, if you want to know the baby born in the manger, all you need to do is talk to God. Ask God to forgive you. Because you and I have all said bad things, done bad things. It's the way we're born. And it doesn't matter how good we try to be. We can never be good enough to get ourselves to God. But the good news is, children, that Jesus came to earth for us. He came to give that man long ago hope. He came to give you and I hope. So, you ask God to forgive you. You ask Jesus to rescue you, then Jesus becomes your king. Not a king in a story that you've heard about, but your king. And then God becomes your father, and he fills your life with hope and love and peace. And he takes away your angriness and your bitterness and all the bad, ugly things. And he fills your heart with love. Children, love came into the world at Christmas. Jesus is love. Thank you, children.